Shabbat Shalom, everybody. That was easy. Yeah, really. My kids didn't listen as well. I'm going to have my kids call y'all, okay? Um, even now, they're all grown and they don't listen. So Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I love that. Um, tonight, uh, as we welcome Shabbat, we are... Um, Welcoming our brand new choir. Everyone say yay. yay. Um, so thank you, Conrad, and thank you all for, for doing this. Um, I'm of the personal belief that when we uh, experience worship leadership from amongst us, then it's, it's our service and it's better. It's less of a spectator thing. And these are the people that many of you will sit with uh, on a weekly basis and you spend time with and you know this is not the rabbi's pulpit this is our pulpit and I think it's important that we uh, we, un we know that and understand it and own it and along that line I'll just go ahead and say next week while Lori and I are Thanksgiving elsewhere I won't say where and we're going to Key West um, um, again we and I, and I say this not to be glib at all, we had an option of saying, okay, well, we're going to go to Bethel. But members of this congregation said, why do we need to go to Bethel? And so the service next week will be lay led. And we've done this many times. And you all have been brilliant in doing it. And I appreciate the leadership um, that it takes to say this is ours. And so thank you for that. We're also celebrating um, this week uh, Bat Mitzvah. Leighton, you'll be uh, pioneering something. You know, tonight you will have probably the largest leadership role on a Friday night service that um, a student has had in a long time. And I hope that that's a growing trend. So as you are fierce on the court and field, okay, you're gonna be fierce in charge tonight, right? Okay. And we've got soup and study. We know how to pack a calendar. <laughs> We're going to begin tonight remembering how beautiful this, this day is, a Shabbat that is supposed to be a day of respite, a day of, of joy and, and renewal. And so, Maya Hayom, you can find on page 128. Candle lighting can be uh, found on page 120. I'm going to ask Leighton if you and your parents will come on up, please. And if your brother wants to join us now that he's the state champion, he, he qualifies as well. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. 
As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Ata Adonai, Elohenu Mela Haalam, Asher Kedeshanu Bomitzvata, Bitsibanu Laha Lignair Shel Shabbat. Turn to page 122. The heaven and the earth were finished in all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing, and God seized on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it, on it God seized from all the work of creation that God had done. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei puri hagafen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kedeshanu b'misvotah, Verasabanu, Veshabah kacho, Veahova uratzon, Hine lanu, Grape juice, it's safe. Okay. Okay. Hug your family. On page 146, I ask that we rise for Barclou. Page 149, please read with me at the top of the page. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way in which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch atah Adonai, ma'aviv ahavi. Baruch atah Adonai, ohev amo Yisrael. Shema is on page 152. Shema Yisrael, Adonai. Please be seated. 
seated. Please turn the page. Ve'avta et Adonai Eloeha Ve'chol avcha u'v'chol nafshecha U'v'chol me'odeha Ve'hayu ha'devarim ha'ele Asher anohim mitzavacha Hayom alivavecha V'shinatam livaneha Veri Bartam Bam, Bishif Techa, Vimetecha, Uvlef Techa, Vatereh, Ushach Vecha, Ukumeha, Ushar Tam Leo, Tayoteha, Vehayu Totafo, Veneha, Uktav Tam, Amuzuzot Beteha, Uvishareha. The Mantis Guru, the Sitem Echo Mitzvotai, the Tem Kedoshi Meloehen, Ani Adonai Eloehen, Asher Otsait Yetem, Meret Mitzrayim, the Yodlahem Melohim, Ani Adonai Eloehen. Page 157, at the top. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there's a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there's no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. 158. <laughs> Please turn to page 161. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storm. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch Adonai, sukat shalom aleinu. We turn the page and we celebrate this day of Shabbat with the Shamru.
We're going to continue with the Amidah. This is a transition in the service between the appreciation and the asking. We've done all of this, um, all these prayers which effectively say that we really feel blessed with the world in which we get to walk, with the opportunity that we get to share. And now we turn to ask uh, ourselves how we can make it better. So we're going to turn to 164. I'm going to ask that we rise. Adonai, Sephatite, Hita, Uvi, Agita, Hila, Teha, Eternal God, open my lips that my mouth may be clear your glory. 166. Tagibo <laughs> Neeman atala chayota kol baruch atarunai mechaye hakol. You are holy, your name is holy, and those who are holy praise you every day. Praised are you, Adonai, the holy God, baruch ata Adonai ha'el hakadosh. Please be seated. Please turn to page 173. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may, all th and may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha On page 177, the bottom please read with me. When we behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place, what are we humans that you are mindful of us, we mortals that you take note of us? You made us little less than divine, adorned us with glory and majesty. You gave us dominion over your handiwork, laying the world at our feet. How majestic is your name throughout the earth. Baruch Adonai. And the best way that we can demonstrate our thanks for the blessings of this world is to create more of them. And so we pray for peace. Shalom Rabs on 178. We're pianists. Shalom Ra Ba Yisrael Am Ha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Ra Ba Yisrael Am Ha Tassim Le'olam Shalom, 
Please turn to page 179. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, O eternal source of peace, and give us the will to proclaim its message to all the people of the earth. Bless our country as a safeguard of peace, its advocate among the nations, may contentment reign within our borders, health and happiness within our homes, strengthen the bonds of friendship and fellowship among all the inhabitants of every land. Plant virtue in every soul, and may the love of your name hollow every home and every heart. Praise to you, our eternal one who blesses our people with peace. Baruch atah Adonai, hamvarech et amo Yisrael. Take a few moments privately and let's think about the ways in which we can make this world more whole. Please rise. Romanu, Adonai, Elohim, Vishakabu, the 
It doesn't help to be called for Nali if you stay far over there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so we're reading from Parsha Toldot. Um, I'm reading the very, uh, well, not the very first, a couple of the first verses tonight. Um, tomorrow morning, Leighton, you're going to be reading a lot more, you and your whole family, further down the, the column. Um, you know what? To follow along in the red chumash, the red prayer book, uh, the red uh, book that's in front of you. Um, it is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of page 173 and, and following. Okay, can I have those glasses? Sure may. Because <laughs> I need both of them to read. Okay. I'm getting old. Okay, so uh, not that old. No. Let me show you where I'm at. Okay. Where's the app? Okay. Oh, so sorry. These are too good. I'll just have to figure it out. Okay, so we're going to be right in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yep. Barachu et Hadonai Ambarach, Baruch Hadonai Ambarach Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Ata Hadonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim, Vinatan Lanu Torah Emet, Et Torah To, Baruch Ata Hadonai Notein HaTorah. Torah Emet's the next one. Okay, good. Amen. So, Ve'ater Yitzchak, uh, verse 19 is where I'm starting. Ve'ater Yitzchak l'adonai l'nochach l'ishto ki akarahi. Ve'ater lo adonai v'taher rivka ishto v'tirtzitzu habanim b'rivka v'tomer imken lama ze anochi. Okay, y'all can relate to this one. Women, you can relate to this one. If this is what it feels like to be pregnant, why me? That's what it says, okay? Just saying. V'telech lidrosh et Adonai. She goes to, um, to God, Vayum, and God says, Vayumer Adonai Allah. Shnei goyim bevit nechal, shnei leumim meimayich, yiperdu leulum meluim, yeamatz verav yaver tzair. And so God says there's two nations. This is why it feels bad. There's two, not just two people, two nations inside you right now. Anybody feel? Twins? Okay. twins? Yes, they are twins. And, um, and, and interestingly, God says to Rivka that the um, younger will rule over the older. Okay? Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu et Torah emet, Vichaye olam nata betofenu, Baruch atah Adonai, notein ha Torah. Amen. Please rise.
stay up here through, just stay up here for a minute. With Torah in hand, we, um, we're thinking the pain that this world is experiencing. We're thinking of the victims of torture. We're thinking of the victims, uh, the families who lay in wait not knowing where their loved ones are ever coming home. We're thinking of the innocents who get caught in the middle of the politics, whose lives are at risk. We think of people who are ill and injured, the caregivers who tirelessly work to make sure that people can return to a sense of shlemut, of, of wholeness. Close to home, we're thinking of members of our family and community, Ed Beck, Reverend Troy DuPont, Lois Gallowitz, Karen Grossman, Kenner Judith Ovadia, Dorothy Parent, Ricky Reeves, Gary Rosenstruck, Mary Ann Sherburn, Nathan Snyder, and Ken Stewart. And if there's other people that we're holding in prayer, please share their names. God, with all of the pain that's there, please make us instruments of healing. Everyone who would consider themselves a real or remotely real Star Trek fan, raise your hand. Okay. Star Trek. The original, okay. Actually, the original thing was Flash Gordon, but that's a whole nother concept. But um, Does anybody remember the episode in the... Um, I believe it was in the second... I didn't even give it to you for to sneeze yet, okay? I got to say it, and then you got to sneeze, and that way I know I got it right. But I think it was in the second season, the episode, The Enemy Within. Yeah. Okay. There are two James T. Kirks. For those who don't know, he was the captain of the Starship Enterprise. 
And in a, a, a transporter glitch, which happens about every fourth episode, there's a glitch with the transporter, which is why I don't ever want to be transported, but in any event, um, he gets split in half. And off of the pad comes a good Kirk and a bad Kirk. And the good Kirk is nice, and he's meek, and he's mild, and he's indecisive because he doesn't want to hurt anybody. He, he, you know, anything he says, he's afraid that someone might be offended and nothing happens. The bad Kirk is bad. And if there's a vice that you can think of that could happen on a starship, he did it. William Shatner says that that was the most fun episode because he didn't have to pretend to be anything but who he wanted to be. Okay? <laughs> I didn't make that up. But in true fashion, um, Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, uh, who played Spock, they were both yeshiva boys. They grew up in the yeshiva. And if you look at the Star Trek, the original Star Trek series, most of the themes come right out of the Talmud or right out of the Torah. Um, Gene Roddenberry was a religious and didn't really care how it played out. He just knew he had a franchise on his hands. And so um, Shatner and Nimoy really directed a lot of um, the, um, the way the episodes went. And of course, the episode was only a 30 minute episode. So you know, people have to figure things out real quick. It took them a while to figure out that the meek and mild Kirk wasn't really Kirk, but they knew pretty immediately that the wild man Kirk wasn't. And so Scotty, the, 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 the real brains of the operation, figured out that something went wrong in the transporter and got split. And so there's this debate that we have to go through watching this episode. So, you know, what do we do with the bad Kirk? If we can't fix it, figure out how to put them back together, what do you do? Well, the first answer is the bad Kirk is going to go in the brig, okay? But the good Kirk can't rule. And that's the conundrum. So they figured out how to put him back through the transporter and it unglitches and we come back with James T. Kirk as an individual. Unless we think that that's, okay, that's nice, that's this week's Torah portion. Okay? You have Rebecca who has twins. And one is Jacob and the other is Esau. And, you know, the beauty of Torah is that we don't get enough of any one character to give a whole biography. And so we really have to fill in the blanks. And different generations are going to see these stories differently. And, and that's okay. Um, the Masoretes, a thousand years ago, put the dots and the dashes in the, with the text because the Torah has no vowels and no sentence structure. And so we have dots and dashes, as you'll see in a prayer book or in a chumash, for ceremonial purposes. But the study of Torah is still, as it's given, just strings of consonants so that we can come up with what we need in commentary in any generation. So I'm looking at um, the character of Jacob, who is meek and who is mild and who is a real home person. And I'm looking at the ruddy um, Esau, who's the hunter and gatherer. And the rabbis don't like him very much um, and have all sorts of midrash stories that fill in the blanks where he does some really challenging things, even while Jacob, in his early years, does some really challenging things. Steals the birthright from his brother, the blessing, um, and will eventually go through his own metamorphosis. But he does so in cunning, and he goes through uh, these things um, in, in deception. And it's not until um, the brothers will meet later in life, which we'll get to actually in the next week's portion, that there's this reconciliation and the boys become one again. Right, where the yin and the yang come together. What we know is that Jacob is not a whole person without the courage. And we know Esau is not a whole person without the humility. And so for all of the nice that we want to be in the times that we say we've got to do the right thing and we've got to be nice to everybody, if we're not able or willing to stand up sometimes, then we can't exist and we can't survive. I can promise you that nothing good in this world has happened without somebody saying, Hineni, it's time for change. I'm ready to stand up and, and, and make it happen. Think about how the world is different because of some of the rabble, the rabble rousers that we've known in history. You know, um, I, um, 
was asked to speak when I first got to Lexington, Kentucky. I was asked to speak at an event, and I made the statement that Moses and Jesus and Muhammad were all flaming liberals. Of course, everyone looked at me, and I said, but think, had they done just what they inherited, there wouldn't be any of the things that we do today. They had to stand up and say, there's a different answer, there's a better answer. And they get castigated for it. And if we think about the heroes in leadership, most of them aren't appreciated until after they're gone. And then we say, oh, they had a right message. The prophets in the Torah are never appreciated. Jeremiah is put in prison for saying, guys, you've got it wrong. And so you've got to, to stand up, even if, if in the niceties and the, and the ethics, there has to be a piece of us that is the bad Kirk, the one willing to take the risks and the willing to take the chances. And only when we are holistic can we really make a difference. So that also means that there are times when we get wronged that we want to immediately strike back, the, the, the bad Kirk in us. If you're going to hit me, I'm going to hit you harder. But there are times when you get hit that you also have to figure out how not to respond in the animal. You have to be measured because there's a bigger picture out there than your immediate uh, revenge. And that's what so many people are struggling with right now uh, with the war in Israel. You know, the question is, is the response from Israel over, is it too much? And, you know, Alan Stolberg and Marty Rogoff and I had this conversation at lunch today. I don't know how to measure that. But I know that uh, because none of us are in those shoes, um, we, the best we can do on this side of the, the water, of the oceans, is conjecture that we would do it differently. Okay? Um, and at the same time, we know that if, the, if you take the number of those slaughtered on October 7th and you take the, the population in Israel and you multiply by the number that would equal the equivalent ratio to population in America, that would mean on one day 47,000 people were slaughtered. Tell me what our response would be. Now, would it be over? It would it be too much. I think so. On 9-11, we went out and started attacking two different nations, neither of whom were sent the ones that sent the pilots, who were Saudis. So, you know, sometimes we, we do overreact. And that may be what's happening, especially when you look at the fact that Hamas's leadership is not there to begin with. They're somewhere else in, in hotel rooms. Um, and when we look at what's going to happen, even if we get rid of all of the, the, the cash, the, the weapons caches, and we get rid of the, the, the centrality of the Hamas operation, when innocent Palestinians come back home, there is no home to come home to. You can't ignore that reality. Or the reality that for Israel to say, as we did after dropping the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we'll help rebuild. For Israel to help rebuild, then Israel will be accused and wants to occupy Gaza again. I mean, there is no win here. There's no moral equivalence and there is no win. Unlike in Star Trek with the Kobayashi Maru, if you know, if you know what that is, the, the unwinnable war that you figure a way out of, there's no answer here. And that's what we're stuck with. And that's what we're fighting about here. And that's what people are at each other's throats over here. People who will go to sleep on our own beds and wake up in our own beds and go to work and have meals in the restaurants of our choice. And yet we're destroying relationships here because of something that we have no control over. So in the last couple of days, there have been a couple of things that have happened. And I'll work backwards. Last night, there was uh, a peace rally at the Hadi Mosque. And I was invited to speak. But I've been in the trenches, and I know what goes on. So I contacted the imam and the president of the uh, region, uh, the Ahmadiyya region. And I said, tell me what's going to happen. And they were very honest. And they said, well, we're praying for peace. We're glad you're going to be there. But you do need to know that we're going to call out Israel for the atrocities. And I said, if you want to call out Israel for bombing and 
you're going to call out Hamas for continuing to kill Palestinians. If this is a prayer for peace and you're talking about justice, we can see things differently. But you can't do one without the other because if assuming the numbers that Hamas is giving us are, are real, the number of Palestinians that are killed because they're human shields or blown up by landmines that Hamas has placed to keep people from escaping to the south, or the people put in harm's way because you've put weapons underneath children's bedrooms. Justice would require us calling all of it out. And they were very candid with me, and they said, you know, we need to think about that. We need to have this conversation. And I said, but, the mo and this was yesterday, I said, tonight's not the night because you're not going to fix this by tonight. I said, so let's get through tonight. I went and spoke at the school board uh, in favor of um, a project that we're working on with Capital Rebirth. Um, I said, get through, do what you're going to do, and then next week when I, when I get back, let's have some intentional conversations about how we as a community can think differently about this. And without hesitation, I got, Mark, you're right. Last night, it went off as planned, and uh, David uh, Cohen, the executive director of Federation, Rabbi Kaptab were there, and I got an alarming text from David. Do you know what I just heard? And all I could say is, yes, I know what you just heard. Reverend Harris, you were there as well. Thank you for speaking for justice last night. Um, and so the measured response, rather than go there and scream back and create a storm, it happened, and we'll do better next time. And I've got their pledge, and I believe it, that there'll be a different answer, because the Hadi Mosque was the first voice in this community to condemn Hamas on October 7th. We can't lose that perspective. Monday, we had an act of vandalism here. The signs that we have out on the tree lawn a Muslim man removed some of the signs. And knowing that he was being photographed, he smiled at the camera. Okay? Now we have to figure out what to do with this. In the time that it took to remove those signs, he could have thrown bricks through the windows. He could have defaced our building. He could have done a lot of things, but all he did was pull signs down. By the way, on a tree lawn, which is something we don't even own, Technically, our signs shouldn't be on the tree line, but that's a whole different issue, okay? And so the immediate response was hate crime, which is a class three felony. My answer is we shouldn't prosecute. We should have a conversation with this person. Issue the summons, there's consequences, but let's see how a conversation will go. I understand his pain. I really do understand because if we pay attention to our community's rhetoric, it can't help but infect us. That doesn't mean that that's the final answer. And I do know that if we prosecute someone over pulling signs down, we make him a martyr. Okay? We have an opportunity here to demonstrate the right way to handle situations. And by the way, we have the opportunity to demonstrate to this person that whatever's going on there, you can decide that what Israel's doing is horrific. That doesn't give you a right to approach Jews in America. Right? And so I wanted to share that with you. The board knows, and they know my, my position on this. And so yet this morning I met with the police officer who took the call. And the police officer told me that her mother is Jewish. Her mother died when she was young. Um, she did not really get to know much about her mom. But she was conflicted because of her own heritage and what happened. And she said that she prayed that we would handle it rationally. So, you know, we, we, we live in this world where we are the Esau, where we need to respond viscerally in our hearts. We're saying there's got to be some, some answer, some, some retribution, some revenge, something to say, you can't do that to me. We also have to be the Jacob that will eventually say there's a better answer that we can all win. Folks, especially in this time of madness right now, I beg us as a community to be that second voice. 
to be the ones to say there is a better answer. I've been in the trenches, and I can tell you that this has been the way I've handled things and responded, but I don't make the decisions here. And certainly I don't walk in your world as you're in your daily lives. But I pray that if we really want to demonstrate what faith is about, then we remind even the people who have forgotten that faith matters for all of us. Shabbat Shalom. We'll continue with Elenu on page 586, and I'll ask that we rise, please. Before I continue with the names on our yard site list, is there anyone here who is related to Rabbi Ted Levy, whose name is on our yard site list? It's a small world. Ted was in South Carolina at the same time I was in South Carolina, and I would love to share stories with whoever that is. Um, this is the beauty of memory. The people who have left our hands, they don't leave us, and the stories continue to get shared around the world. And that's the blessing of immortality. We praise God who implants within us immortal life. And that's, uh, that's something that I think we take for granted um, way too often. This week's Yort Sites, Albert Baruch, Joe Blank, B. Leon Brenner, Alec H. Hezek, Mildred L uh, Lewis Danielson, Milton W. Finstein, Emmanuel Forner, Carol Gears, Dr. Macy Ginsburg, Murray M. Gold, Gladys F. Goodman, Dr. Jack Gould, Annette Greenberg, Frida Grobman, Hertha Hess, August Herschler, Alan Kaplan, Thomas Kiefer, Rabbi Richard J. Lehrman, Rose Herman Lehrman, Florence Levy, Rabbi Theodore S. Levy, Fanny Medoff, Warren Minerly, Bruce Levy Novosel, Mildred K. Shapiro, Miriam Silver, Rose Weber, Lawrence Weeder, and Etta F. Yablonowitz. Are there other annual yard sites being observed tonight? Zichonam Livracha, may the memories that people leave us lead us to blessing. The words of Kaddish are on 598. Yitgedal ve Yitgedash Rabba. Be'al ma divrach irutei v'yamlich machutei. Becha yechon v'yom echon. Uvcha yeh dechol b'et Yisrael. Ba'galau v'zman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shmei rabba nevarach le'olam ulamei almaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'a v'tromam v'yit nase. V'yit adar v'yit alei v'yit alal shmei dekudsha v'brichu. Le'lam min kol b'irchata v'shirata. Tushbechata v'nechmata, ta amiran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehe shloma rabba min shemaya, v'chaim alenu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'imroma, hu ya'a se shalom, alenu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort us, all who are bereaved, and we say together, amen. Please be seated. 
Those of you who have the program, isn't that beautiful? So if you haven't met Amanda in the front office yet, please make sure that you call or step by, stop by. Amanda is just, uh, as our new administrative assistant, just an incredibly uh, breath of fresh air. Um, there's lots going on. Of course, as soon as we're done here, we have our special own egg, and then we have uh, soup and study. Tomorrow morning is the Torah study. Um, the um, youth book club and the book club are uh, on Sunday. Um, Tuesday's coffee is going to happen without us, without me anyway. Please enjoy. And the next Shabbat, um, we'll be gathering back here. Uh, announcements um, are also in the weekly email, our Shalomogram on Tuesdays. So you can find them on our website and on the calendar on our website. Um, and so I want to make sure that you RSVP for the Hanukkah dinner for the designer bag bingo and everything else that's going on. I want to call special attention to December 3rd. Um, we're gathering the whole congregation for brunch. Please let us know that you're coming. The purpose of the brunch is to really dive into creating our long range plan. Um, uh, it, I was brought here to help us figure out our future traje trajectory and we're at that place having finished focus groups and gathered information uh, on the third, we're not going to talk about programming, but Marty Rogoff and Alan Stolberg and I are going to help you figure out what our mission should be, how we want to be seen in the entire community. Um, beginning with, as I alluded to on Kol Nidre, this is Judy's Ohev Shalom is Jewish Harrisburg. Okay? I'm not demeaning the other congregations, but everybody, every Jew from every walk of life is welcome in our, in our membership. We have people in our membership who are, are what we call the ger toshav, those who stand with us who may or may not yet be Jewish or may never be Jewish. But everybody that walks in our door matters. And so this really is Jewish Harrisburg. And we want to make sure that what we do and how we see ourselves and how the world sees us uh, meets that, uh, that definition. So that is going to be December the 3rd. It'll be the first of probably two or three gatherings. The goal is to come out with a vision statement, who we want to be and a brand, something tangible, and then we'll be fleshing it out and what it will take to accomplish those as we have future conversations. So please um, make time to be with us on December the 3rd. Um, and with that, I'm going to thank again um, Conrad and our choir. I got to tell you, it was beautiful to hear your voices up here. Um, thank you for the work that you've put in and the, the dedication. And for some of you who have been in a previous iteration of our choir, welcome back, okay? Um, I think, is there any other announcements that I've missed? Of, oh yeah, tomorrow morning. <laughs> Y'all are welcome tomorrow morning. We do realize that while it is Leighton's Bat Mitzvah, it is our Shabbat morning service. And you don't need an invitation to attend worship and pray with us on our Shabbat morning. So um, please, let's start making it a habit. When there is a, um, a bar, bat, or b'mitzvah service on a Saturday morning, come and celebrate with the family. And let our families know that, that we are a congregational family that we step up with and for each other. And that would be a, a true blessing. We are going to close tonight. Um, with Ozi Vizimrat Ya, it's on page 647, and then we're going to do Motzi with the incredibly beautiful challah that Susan, you've made coming back to us after a, a hiatus, and so thanks for doing it. Um, and anybody that wants to be part of Motzi, you'll meet me down right there in just a minute.
So, one of your first official jobs as an adult is going to be to cut a piece of this in just a minute, okay? Um, they don't trust me with knives. Uh, may, um, may this be a Shabbat Menucha, a Sabbath day that brings rest from the storm. May it be a, a Shabbat Mevorach, uh, a Sabbath that brings us the blessings for which we pray. And the sense of asking that this be a Shabbat Shalom, may we take the sacredness of what we've done together and the space that we've shared and take it with us and help infect the world with our Sabbath peace. And may we say it together, Amen. Amen. So everybody that wants to give, to give a piece of this beautiful challah, come on up. If not, we'll share it anyway, but okay. So, all right. Yes, please. Avon and Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Get some challah. Let me share that with your family. Get some challah and let's all go downstairs for some uh, stuff. What, Susan, what did I do wrong? Don't tell her why. Do not say anything for her. What you can tell her after that that's why it happened because she did. Fair enough? Okay. Let's join us downstairs, folks. Thank you. Okay. okay. Anybody wants challah? I got to give Brooke a piece. Let me let me just give Brooke a piece. Brooke. Okay. Thank you. So. You and I need to have a conversation, young man. Thank you. Thank you. We need to have a talk about confirmation.